Well, this is Apostle John Welty with Second Eighth Week Ministries, and today is Sunday, uh, February 19th of 2012. I see I'm just a little, about a minute late here, getting started. And uh, but we're going to be picking up here in 1 John chapter 1, uh, and picking up on verse 4, or uh, verse 5. We left off in verse 4. Um, and just to, just as a reminder, and I mentioned this at the beginning of assembly last week, Okay, Apostle John here, he's bringing out some things that you want to make note of and keep in mind throughout this epistle. Okay, he's bringing out why our confidence can be placed in Christ. All right, he's bringing out how uh, how Christ manifests himself through his government, truth, and spirit. Okay, uh, Apostle John is bringing out how separation is necessary from darkness to light. How there must be separation from darkness to light. And that Christ has provided that for us in himself through his covenant. Uh, and Apostle John is bringing out that our stages of growth are through our overcoming, not apart from our overcoming, but through our overcoming. Okay, all of the uh, covenant apostles of Christ uh, are, are remain focused upon these same things. And it's just, it's just important to uh, to kind of set the stage uh, as we as we get into these. And we also talked about last time as concerning uh, some glossary terms, right? That sin singular uh, refers to the system, and sins plural refers to the fruits. Okay, so sin is the system that inspires the fruit, which is sins. Okay, uh, and that's helpful to understand that as well. So let's jump down here. Uh, well, let me go ahead and just read through into verse five. And uh, and then we'll pick up with expounding in verse 5. So beginning again with verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled uh, of the word of life. For the, the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness. And show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Uh, and that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, in verse 4, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, uh, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And if we confess our sins, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay, so let's get back into that. Um, I had just a couple of notes this morning uh, that I added to verse 4 here. Okay, it's concerning where he says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Okay, and we talked about that last time. It's concerning uh, we, he's talking about uh, us apostles. Okay, living, living knowledge stewards. Okay, and we write this, that your joy may be full. Now, uh, or in other words, that you can have confidence and trust in this knowledge, which is confirmed by the witness of God. Okay, the knowledge that we share with you, we receive from God, okay, and nothing has been added to it, nothing has been taken from it. As we have received, so also do we, we share with you. Okay, this is stewardship. Okay, and God has chosen this method and has always used this method okay, of preserving truth through stewardship okay, in order to maintain the wholesomeness of his knowledge. Right? Because... What happens is that people who are not working with the grace of God, or, or working with that measure of grace that he supplies to his selected knowledge stewards, okay, will uh, turn okay, the, his knowledge to, uh, instead of reflecting that which is from above, it's like a mirror. Okay? They'll turn the mirror so now it reflects something that's you know, not the focal point. right? Well, Christ is the focus of God. Okay, so if the knowledge is turned, okay, it now reflects man. Okay, it's reflecting the soil. And this is what happens. They find what, what people do is they, 
um, uh, you know, they feel that they have a right to, uh, you know, to study the scriptures apart from government, okay, apart from that uh, that measure of grace, okay. But what happens is that they end up uh, becoming rather confused, okay. And as uh, looks like I got a, I might have a broadcast problem here. Uh, just just one moment here. Okay, looks like that's working better now. Um, well, and this is what we see. Well, let's take a look at that. So in contrast, when he says that these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Or in other words, this knowledge which we receive through the headship of Christ, through his stewardship, is necessary for the fulfilling of our joy. Or in other words, uh, for your expectations to be directed into the covenant of Christ and for you to experience the work of Christ within your soul, bringing redemption, okay, bringing a cleansing and a separation from darkness and a joining to light. For you to experience that reality of the fullness of Christ, okay, it is necessary for us uh, to work with the stewardship of God. Okay, that's what he's saying. Well, what do we see in, in the in the absence of that? Okay, uh, so in contrast, when people try to separate scriptures from stewardship, what do we see? Okay, well, the apostles wrote about that. Okay, Apostle Paul wrote about that uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 3 7. Okay, uh, 2 Timothy 3 7, which reads, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of, uh, of the truth. Okay, when he was talking, he was, he was warning, Apostle Paul was warning uh, Timothy is concerning these things, that there were those who were ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so they were uh, they were heaping uh, teachers upon themselves and eager to study, but not wanting to work with that measure of grace. Okay, <clears throat> never able to come to the knowledge, the knowledge of truth. Without truth in the heart, okay, our faith cannot be perfect in Christ. Okay, and faith must be perfect to be received by God, because God will accept nothing less than Christ. Okay, and that's why truth is necessary. When truth comes through stewardship. Okay, then it remains whole, then it is beneficial for your faith, okay, which is why this foundation knowledge must be laid within the heart okay, for us to function in the priesthood of Jesus Christ with sanctified faith. Okay, then we experience the witness of the Father giving birth to the fruit of faith within the heart, and this, <clears throat> this is how God is determined to know us, through fruit bearing. Okay? And so this is how we participate in, uh, in agreement with the plan of God. Now, also, we see this uh, Apostle Peter. We talked about this a few weeks back. Okay, in uh, Apostle Peter, in, in 2 Peter 3, verse 16, okay, where he writes, uh, as also in all his epistles, speaking of uh, Apostle Paul, uh, he goes on saying, speaking in them of these things, okay, these same things that Apostle John is writing here, he says, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. He's talking about the tools of the covenant. He's talking about those things which are sanctified by God for our labor of faith, for our use, okay? And uh, so he says, speaking of them, uh, in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, okay, because these things are spiritual, these things are invisible, okay, so they're not, uh, they're not evident to the carnal-minded, okay, and so therefore they struggle with these things because they're trying to discern everything carnally. Okay, they're trying to set discernment within themselves, and that, that will lead them to much confusion. So he says, these, and some things which are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures, under their own destruction. Okay, So they're reading the Bible, they're reading the scriptures, and it leads to their own destruction. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Isaiah brought out the same thing in Isaiah chapter 50. Okay, They that, uh, that walk by the light of their own fire, same thing. Okay? They're trying to understand apart from... Uh, the Spirit of God. They're not wanting to work with the grace of God. They're resisting His grace and trying to elevate the Scriptures above the Spirit. Okay, which which brings uh, which, which God does not sanctify. Okay, <clears throat> and so they uh, uh, and, and it leads them to their own destruction. We see this happening all the time. I was just in a discussion the other night on uh, on Facebook with some people that were trying to to emphasize those things. Uh, not very edifying conversation, obviously. But so you can see how it's necessary for us to work with the stewardship of God, because apart from that, the heart the heart will wander. Okay, it's the same thing you see all throughout the 
the uh, the Bible. You, uh, the book of Judges is a great example, okay, because you can see this pattern. God raises up a knowledge steward, okay. Faith uh, faith is then again directed by truth, okay. And then in the in the absence of the knowledge steward, uh, people do that which seems right in their own in their own eyes. Okay, they still think they're serving God, but their heart is beginning to wander. Okay, because this is what happens. Okay, stewardship is necessary for faith to find direction, for faith to be directed into those things which God, uh, which God sanctifies. Okay, because otherwise people select for themselves those things which they feel would be pleasing to God. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, but God has not, uh, God does not sanctify uh, the imagination uh, or the the heart of man to make these selections because He has already made these selections. And he has already selected which things he has sanctified for our faith. We don't choose those things for ourselves. We, uh, we through faith, are humbling the will in obedience to that which he has made known. Okay, the revelation knowledge of God, that which he has made known, is concerning uh, the tools which are sanctified for our use in the covenant of Christ. So we're coming in agreement and walking uh, in obedience to that voice okay, as we labor only with these things, which is why we then experience the witness of God, because then he sustains our faith. Okay, then you know what it means to be uh, to have your faith sustained by God, because the witness will be present to make your faith living. So in verse five, let's go on here, um, and I hope the uh, the audio and, and video is coming through good. I'm every now and then getting some uh, low quality signals here, so uh, I hope that's coming through okay. And uh, we'll go on in verse five. Okay, so he says, this then is the message we, which we have heard of him and declare we unto you, okay, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, so he talks about uh, the message. This is the message. He's talking about the plan, okay, the plan of God. Jesus Christ is the plan of God, okay, uh, and this also can be understood as the blueprint, okay. This is the blueprint which is, which is providing direction for faith, okay, which is why the, the apostles are called master builders because they are the ones who... Uh, to whom is revealed the blueprint, okay, who can oversee uh, the work being done, okay, the building in the kingdom of God. Uh, and of course, this is spiritual, not, this is not carnal, this is, this is spiritual, okay, that uh, we're not building, um, you know, physical buildings, that's not building in the kingdom of God, okay, this is, uh, we're talking about the increase of the substance of the kingdom of God through fruit bearing, this is through our overcoming the cycles of our growth, is we keep covenant with God and he works regeneration within our souls, okay, which the knowledge uh, the knowledge of the plan of God makes these things known to us, okay, setting our expectations in Christ that we would experience the cleansing of the conscience, that we would experience the fruit of faith being born within our hearts by the Spirit. Again, this is spiritual fruit, okay, that that which is invisible, uh, we would be given a tangible substance and evidence of this by the Spirit, okay, so that we would not be walking blind, Okay, or have to be left to uh, project with our imagination. Okay, but we would, uh, but the the faithful would receive the testimony of God. Okay, that, that He would bear witness, and we would be willing to receive that witness. Okay, which which provides tangible uh, evidence. Okay, of Christ working in us. Okay, so that uh, <clears throat> so that our faith is is grounded and rooted in Christ. Okay, by experience, we are experiencing the work of Christ within our soul. Okay, we're not reading about it and trying to imagine what it would be like. Okay, which you hear people talking about in the false religious system. Okay, but we are following the pattern of the plan which he has made known to us through his apostles. Okay, and in so doing, we are making use of that knowledge okay, to choose those things which he has sanctified for our faith. Okay, therefore, we're touching the clean things, not the unclean things. Okay, and as we are now being productive with sanctified contact with Christ, okay, our faith is daily remaining joined to Christ because we're not touching everything. We're not walking around picking up everything we find that looks shiny. Okay, which we were doing in the uh, prior to coming to the covenant of God. Okay, everything that caught our eye or everything that touched our heart, okay, we were molding our confidence with, okay, which brought about a lot of unproductive contact. Okay, and it worked corruption within the soul. Okay, it brought bruising to the will for faith. Okay, but now through the covenant knowledge of Christ, we have direction for faith. Okay, we know which things the Lord has sanctified, which things have not been sanctified. Okay, we, we know which things join us to the light of Christ. Okay, and therefore we know. By contrast, if we know what joins us to Christ, we know what doesn't join us to Christ, everything else. Okay? Therefore, we mold our confidence and our affections with these things, which, which God has selected, which God has revealed. 
And again, we didn't select these things for ourselves. Okay, We are simply walking in agreement with God, working with those things that he has selected for us. Okay, <clears throat> And again, also, we're not sustaining our own faith in Christ because, the, because as you exercise your faith with this knowledge, God bears witness. Okay, You will partake of that, uh, that witness from above, Okay, and you, your faith will be made living by him. Okay, apostles don't make your faith living. We're simply providing you with the blueprint. We're giving you the blueprint to follow. Okay, God supplies the spirit. God provided the blueprint, and he does so through his knowledge stewards. Okay, and God provides the witness. So he provides the, the, the record, the witness, and the fruit, doesn't he? Okay, so everything is of Christ. Okay, then your faith is, is joined to Christ. Okay, but not apart from this knowledge. That's why he says, these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. It's necessary. Okay. It's absolutely necessary, okay. and that does not uh, that does not mean that apostles okay, are above Christ. We're servants of Christ. We're simply we're simply providing that uh, which Christ is providing through us. Okay, it's no different than when the uh, uh, when Jesus fed the multitude. Okay, he he broke the bread and, and gave it to his apostles to give to the people. Okay, you see that there's a distribution taking place. It's no different. Um, so he says, okay, this message, which we have heard, okay. So when he says we heard, he's not talking about in the flesh, okay. Uh, they did hear Jesus speaking, didn't they? Okay, but that's not what he's talking about here. Okay, he's talking about by the Spirit, all right. <clears throat> John is talking about the measure of grace, which is given to apostles to understand and make known this mystery of how Christ works within the soul. Okay? That's what he's referring to. The Pharisees... Okay, heard Jesus speak, didn't they? They heard a man speaking, and uh, and all they saw was someone challenging their way of thinking. Okay, they took offense, they resisted grace. Judas Iscariot, okay, he also heard Jesus speaking, didn't he? Okay, he heard a man. He was mixing Jesus' words with an aspiration, and he was resisting the grace of God. Okay, <clears throat> and also we see that the other apostles, they were listening to the grace of God. Okay. And they continue to do so after his ascension. And you can see you can see this brought out in Matthew six seventeen. Uh, I'm sorry, Matthew sixteen, Matthew chapter sixteen, verse seventeen, uh, which reads, "And Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, speaking to uh, Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, uh, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven." Okay, he was he was working with that measure of grace, okay, which God was supplying. Okay. Like I said, Jesus spoke to them all, <clears throat> but uh, it, it, it's not talking about, he's not talking about that which he heard in the flesh, but that which he heard by the Spirit. Okay, He was submitting himself to the grace of God, okay, which was working with the knowledge that Jesus uh, was sharing with them. Okay, The same thing we do, uh, <clears throat> that uh, as we will recognize uh, the grace of God in the knowledge of the covenant, okay, which we receive through his, uh, through his stewardship. Okay. Same way I recognized uh, that this knowledge was of God, okay, because I I, uh, I knew it by His grace, okay. Same thing. God provides the power to bear witness to this knowledge, and that witness is not is not present in the uh, the false religious system. Okay? You see a lot of people trying to prop up uh, and to create a reality through lighting and through music and through uh, you know temperature and through uh, all of these different visual effects and everything that they do, okay, they're trying to create a witness. They're trying to create uh, an inspiration to make people feel like they're in the presence of God, okay, because they have to manufacture that. Why? Because Christ is, is not in that knowledge, okay? That's why. Okay? You don't have to do that when you're working with truth, okay? When you're working with truth, you will experience the edification of Christ's presence uh, every day as you're laboring in faith with the tools of the priesthood, Okay? Because by faith, we're joining ourselves to Christ. Okay? You cannot come into contact with Christ without being edified by him. Okay? <clears throat> you don't have to. That's not something you stir up. That's not something you have to create for yourself. Okay? This is something that he provides. All right. And he says here, also declare we unto you. Um, or in other words, uh, we can see a flow. Okay? From God to Christ to the angels to the apostles to the church. There's a flow, isn't there? Okay, from God to Christ, to the angels, to the apostles, to the church. 
okay, that God provides this supply. Okay, there is a flow that is not cut off. Okay, it's not redirected. It's not misdirected. Okay, but it flows, and so it flows out. Okay, by this pattern. Okay, so also is it received back to God because it has not been altered along the way. Okay, but when people take <clears throat> scriptures which were inspired by God, okay, that that came through this flow. Okay, but they take them and then and then separate themselves from that grace and try to interpret things uh, in the light of their own understanding. Okay, all they end up with is, is uh, an enlightened self-interest. That's all they end up with, okay, which God does not sanctify that knowledge okay, uh, because, that they, uh, because of the direction they've taken it. Okay, so it does, it's not beneficial for their faith then. Okay, so even though the scriptures were inspired, it can lead them to their own destruction, as we saw in, uh, in Peter there. Okay, and you notice that when Peter talked about that the unlearned and unstable rest, he's not saying that they need to be, uh, you know, scholars in the original languages, and, and if not, they're not learned, or, or uh, you know, they need to have a degree from some university, and if not, they're unlearned. He's talking about they're unlearned and unstable because they're not abiding single-minded in Christ, and they do not have the foundation of truth laid within their heart by a, by the uh, a living apostle of Christ. That's what he means by the unlearned and unstable, okay? Uh, the common man can understand clearly the plan of God, okay, if he has gone through his separation and cleansing and received the foundation of truth in his heart, okay? And it takes, on average, maybe about six months for people to have this foundation of truth. They go through uh, the separation and cleansing, being cleansed from, the, uh, from false indoctrinations as they receive the foundation knowledge of Christ, which, which covers all of the elements of the gospel, Okay, makes known the uh, the nine tools okay, of the uh, of the priesthood, okay, <clears throat> and, and and directs our faith into those things which he has sanctified that are that our labor and activity of faith would be directed by truth, okay, and as we do so, we begin to experience the work of regeneration in our souls. Okay, uh, you do not need to be uh, a a scholar or you know whatever whatever terms you might want to use. When he says unlearned and unstable, he's simply talking about they have not the foundation of truth in their heart. Okay, and unstable has to do with being double double minded or uh, you know shifting the foot. Okay, because they don't their confidence they don't know where to set their confidence. Well, if you have truth in your heart, you know where to set your confidence because it's uh, the the way of righteousness is made very clear through through this knowledge. Okay, so you're unlearned having not this truth, therefore you're unstable. Right? They go together. Okay, <clears throat> but anyway, let's go on. Okay, so he says, declare we unto you, we talked about that, and he says, uh, for God is light, and in him is no darkness at all, all right? Or in other words, there's no knowledge in him that confirms the iniquity of Adam. There's no knowledge in him that confirms the iniquity of, uh, the iniquity of Adam, okay? There can be no mixing of light and darkness. There can be no mixing of the knowledge, okay? There can be no mingling of the seed. There's the corruptible seed and the incorruptible seed, okay? Which is, the seed speaks of a pattern, Okay. <clears throat> Uh, and there can be no mixing or mingling of the seed. Uh, same thing. Okay, there can be no mixing of the knowledge. Okay, there's false knowledge and there's truth. There's nothing in between. There's nothing in between. Okay, if you are searching for truth, then you're standing in darkness. Okay, because the only way you can abide in the light is to abide within truth. Okay, truth must be set within the heart. If you're receiving the foundation knowledge of Christ through apostles, then you're abiding in Christ. Very simple. Okay, and if you're not abiding in that knowledge, Okay, and uh, laboring in faith with it, then you're standing in darkness. Okay, the, the, these are the two, these are the two choices. There's two kingdoms. Okay, so covenant faith in Christ must replace the aspiration of man. Right, covenant faith in Christ must replace the aspiration of man. In Him is no darkness at all. Okay, the apostles' doctrine must replace the principle of man. You cannot use your own principle, okay, as a pillar of truth. Okay? This is what people try to do, uh, wanting to rule. Uh, they want everything to center around themselves. Okay, <clears throat> the principle must uh, must be put to death by faith in Christ. Okay, as we receive truth in the heart, okay, uh, we're allowing uh, we're we're allowing that uh, that pillar of our own principle to be torn down, okay, and truth instead to become the pillar of our heart. Okay, but that truth must be from above. Okay, it must come through the headship of Christ through the apostles' doctrine. Uh, and also the imagination of man must be tamed by the Spirit, okay? It must be tamed by the law of the Spirit, which is the law of grace and truth, 
Okay, the imagination of man must be tamed by the law of the Spirit. Okay, brought within the restrictions and the boundaries of the covenant or the framework of truth. Okay, the, the imagination cannot be allowed to reach beyond these boundaries that God set. Okay, so that's what he means. In him, uh, in him is no darkness at all. Okay, you cannot be <clears throat> standing in darkness, okay, and trying to have fellowship with God. You can't do it. So you got people talking about being sanctified sinners. Okay, that's... Uh, that, that doesn't exist. It doesn't make any sense at all. They understood the plan of God. They wouldn't say such things. Okay. Um, so the grace of God is not sympathetic to the flesh. Okay. Uh, but is sympathetic only to Christ. Okay. The grace of God is sympathetic only to Christ and will confirm Christ alone. Okay. It is through the humbling of the will and obedience to the grace of God that we receive his truth through the stewardship of his selected knowledge stewards. Okay. And it's his selected knowledge stewards who assist us in our separation, cleansing, and preparation to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Okay, this is necessary. They are serving God, okay, by assisting us in this process. All right, so there's no boast for them in this. And okay? there's no boast for the for the, the apostles, okay, in simply uh, making known to others what has been made known to them. Okay, this isn't something that we came up with. This isn't something we discovered. Okay, that would be no better than uh, than all of the uh, false doctrines being preached in the false religious system, which which man would have to sustain. Okay, you, if you create your own doctrine, you have to sustain your own doctrine. Okay, but if you are simply making known that which God has revealed, then God sustains. Okay, you see the difference because the witness of of God will be present to to make Christ living. So if Christ is not in your knowledge, you're going to have to sustain it yourself because you're working with an idol. Right? We've talked about that before. You carve for yourself an idol. Okay, even though it has legs that can't walk, you have to move it around yourself. Okay, even though it has hands, it can't touch anything, right? So you have to reach with it. Okay, even though it has eyes, it can't see. And even though it has a mouth, it can't speak. So you have to speak for it. And that's what happens when you work with idolatry, which Apostle John warns against. Okay, that's what happens when you're embracing the philosophies of this world. Okay, or you create philosophies of your own, okay, to embrace and to promote. Okay. You have to provide your own witness, okay, and it and it will return to the soil, okay, because it uh, it cannot abide in the light of God, because it works in darkness, and in Him is no darkness at all. Therefore, it can't be joined to Christ. So the pattern that God has provided for our faith uh, to follow, okay, the, the pattern that He has provided for our faith to follow, just like uh, tracks are laid for a train to follow, okay. Uh, the knowledge of the plan of God, okay, provides a pattern for our faith to follow. We follow this pattern by faith, okay, working with the knowledge and the tools and the spirit of God, okay. His knowledge, his tools, his spirit, okay, which is made known to us through his spiritual government, okay. So we're simply working with that which God is providing for us, for our faith, then our faith is directed by him, then our faith is sustained by him. Then we're working with the, the, uh, the uh, we're working in cooperation with the spirit of God, Okay, and we're overcoming by the assisted ability of the Spirit, okay, by the covenant. Okay, all of these things become true and common to your, your experience of faith when you keep covenant with God. None of these things okay, are common to those that are not walking by faith in, uh, in covenant with God. Okay, they, can, they can read about that. Uh, they can read about that experience, but it's foreign to them. They try to interpret it carnally. They try to, to make sense out of it in their daily lives, okay, and it leads them to their own destruction gets us back to what Paul said, okay, or they're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth, okay, and they're constantly heaping for themselves t teachers, okay, but never able to come to truth, okay, <clears throat> because they're trying to do, they're trying to work with something other than the foundation knowledge of Christ, they want to know him some other way, okay, uh, then God, I, I, I want to know you, but I don't want your apostles, God, I want to know you, but I don't want to work with your spirit, okay, that's what they're trying to do, that offends God. That's offensive to God, okay? Because they're refusing what He has provided for them, okay? What He has provided for the redemption. It's the same thing as someone saying, "I don't want to get in the ark," okay? I'm afraid of boats. I don't want to get in the ark, okay? Then there's no deliverance, okay? Because the deliverance was within the ark, not outside the ark. Okay? It's the same thing. It's no different. So the plan, okay? The plan of God is unfolded to us, okay? Uh, by God, God unfolds these things to us as we experience his regeneration and his active involvement in our lives. Okay, it's truth which makes all the necessary connections 
for us to be able to join ourselves to this divine work of Christ within the canopy of his light. So truth is necessary, and God, uh, <clears throat> God has chosen uh, to restrict truth through his apostles, okay, that it cannot be discovered, okay, that uh, the intellect of man cannot unlock this mystery. Okay? Uh, it has to be unlocked by the, uh, by the Spirit. Okay? The Spirit is the key. Okay, so only those who are working with that measure of grace, which Apostle John's talking about here, are able to uh, uh, to uh, reveal this plan, okay, share this knowledge with others, okay, in order to direct faith into covenant contact with God. All right, and it's here that you'll experience the witness of God. So in verse six he goes on: If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Okay, where he says. <clears throat> And he says, if we say, okay, he's talking about the condition of the heart, okay? Uh, if we're saying we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, okay, or in other words, if we're not observing and doing, but simply acknowledging for association to gain advantage, okay? Or as Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Okay, I never knew you, okay? Because I only, <clears throat> we, uh, he has determined to only know us through fruit bearing, okay? Through fruit, which is born through our cycles of growth, through our overcoming, Okay? It's only through covenant contact with, that we bear forth the fruit of Christ within the heart. So you uh, trying to associate with him okay, with the lips, but not observing and doing that which he has commanded for faith in the new covenant of Christ, okay, <clears throat> then there's no fruit. Okay? There's no, there's, there's, the, uh, uh, the soul remains naked okay, and ashamed. Okay? The, 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 the conscious remains uh, uncleansed. Okay, there is no regeneration taking place. That's why he says that if we if we say that we have fellowship with him, but we walk in darkness, okay, or if we say that we have fellowship with him and we're searching for truth, if we say that we have fellowship with him and we're embracing the philosophies of the world, if we say that we have fellowships with him, okay, and we're following the uh, doctrines of men, okay, if we say that we have fellowship with him, uh, but we say that we don't need apostles today. Okay, we say that we have fellowship with him, but we say that we don't need uh, the baptism of the Spirit and tongues uh, are, are of no use. Okay, Walking in darkness, that's what it means. Walking in darkness means walking outside of the light. Okay, you see that? Walking in darkness means that there, there's boundaries. You can be in and you can be out. Well, it's the same thing with the light. If you're in the light, okay, then you're abiding within the boundaries that God set. Okay, God defines the boundaries of his light. You're either within those boundaries, which are made known by the covenant, okay, the terms and the conditions that God set uh, for us to experience the redemption of Christ, or you're outside, okay, which means uh, in Christ or without. Okay, so if you're walking in darkness, you're without Christ. It's very simple. Okay, you may think that you're that you're not without Christ because he says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. So you can see that there's people that are confused. They think they have fellowship with him, but they're walking in darkness. And he says, if you do that, we lie and we do not the truth. That's what he's saying. Okay, so these are these are people that are unconverted believers. Okay, uh, they uh, they feel that they believe in God and are following Christ, but they're they're walking in darkness still. They have not yet come into covenant with him. Okay, it's what we call unconverted believers. Okay, <clears throat> there's no benefit in that. They need to come into they need to come into covenant. They need this foundation knowledge of truth to direct their faith. They need to, they need to participate in their separation and cleansing in submission to God. Okay, just as we all did, we all had to go through the same thing. Okay, <clears throat> and so when he says uh, fellowship with Him, that has to do with an exchange of substance. Okay, there can be no exchange of substance apart from fruit bearing. If you're not experiencing regeneration within the soul, then there's no exchange of substance. If you have not his knowledge within the heart, okay, and I'm not talking about your own private interpretation of his scriptures. You read the scriptures apart from the spirit, okay, apart from uh, working with his stewardship, okay, you're interpreting things in the light of your own experiences and your own background, okay, and your own uh, uh, way of thinking, okay. <clears throat> That's not what I'm talking about, having his knowledge in your heart. I'm talking about his holy ordered knowledge, ordered by truth, okay. Uh so if you say, uh, and, and it's that knowledge, okay, which we gain, we, we gain that knowledge, which also includes uh, uh, the, the experience that we gain, okay, uh, the understanding that we gain by experiencing the work of Christ within the soul. Okay, it's that knowledge okay, that we have fellowship with him 
okay, with that knowledge, that substance. That substance is, is, is born from above, okay? It's not from beneath, it's from above, okay? It is not, uh, it's not born of the intellect of man. It's not, uh, it does not, uh, it's not by the, uh, the emotional center of man, okay? And it's not by uh, something that, uh, that Adam unlocks, okay, or discovers. Okay? It's none of these things. He, ha he will have no fellowship with us in darkness, and that's what he's saying. There, there can be no mixing. Okay? Uh, our fellowship with him has to be with an exchange of substance which is from above. Okay, fruit after his kind. Okay? Knowledge which is from above. Christ has to be in the knowledge for it to be beneficial for the exchange of substance. Okay, and that's what he means by fellowship. Okay? That's that exchange of substance. Uh, and when he talks about walking in darkness. Okay, walking in darkness being, it has to do with being in agreement with that system, okay, which is agreeable to our principle. Okay. Satan will sympathize with the flesh. Satan will agree with your principle. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Satan will be more than happy uh, to uh, puff up your imagination okay, and to provide an inspiration uh, for your aspiration. Okay, but God won't do that. Okay, the Spirit of God won't do that. Okay, walking in darkness also has to do with using the pattern of our own signature uh, and the tools of the world. Okay. Uh, through which the kingdom of darkness provides inspiration for the fruit of iniquity. Okay? That has to do with walking in darkness. We worship the one whose tools we use. Okay? It's very simple. We worship the one whose tools we use. You're either using the tools of the spirit, walking in the light, okay, or you're not, which means you're walking in darkness. Okay? It doesn't mean you think you're walking in darkness. Okay? Like I said, if we say we have fellowship with him, but walk in darkness. So you can see that he's talking about those that are confused. All right? It's part of the mystery of iniquity. They have a false sense of piety, okay, but not approved by God. Okay. So, and uh, and he says we lie, okay. So he says if we walk, uh, if we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie. Or in other words, the principle is a lie, okay. The principle is a lie. And this is what we see most people trying to do. They try to use the principle for truth, okay. They... They find the scriptures which, which seem agreeable to themselves, okay, or agreeable to their, their new image of themselves as they, as they reshape themselves, okay, coming up with an enlightened self-interest, okay, and they try to use that, okay, for truth. We see this uh, with a great many people. They're trying to work with the moral code, okay, for righteousness, <clears throat> but that is not the righteousness of God, okay, as uh, Apostle Paul brings out. Okay, that is a self-righteousness. Okay, that's not a righteousness of God, but that's a self-righteousness. That's not accepted by God. Okay, God requires faith. Okay, God requires faith. A faith which must be drawn by his spirit, okay, by his grace. Okay, <clears throat> uh, born of the spirit, drawn from the heart, from above. That's what God requires. Okay, as he has said, obey my voice. Okay, all they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, not by the moral code, but by faith. And so he says, do, okay, they do not the truth. There's an activity here, isn't there? Okay, do not the truth. Walk in darkness, do not the truth. You see the activity here? Okay, there's an activity. Okay, if they do not the truth, okay, there's no activity. There's no exchange of truth. Okay, truth demands conformity. Truth is, uh, truth is mightier than the principle, and it will not conform to the principle. Okay. We must conform to truth okay, through uh, the activity of our faith, which, which makes application with this holy order knowledge. We must. This is the only thing that God has sanctified for faith. And so he says, if we say that we have fellowship while walking in darkness, okay, or in other words, the substance of truth is not coming full cycle through charity. Right? And this is the purpose of our being granted the holy knowledge and truth. And God provides truth to us that he can receive charity back from us. Okay, truth in the heart, charity from the lips. Okay, truth and charity are twins. Okay, these are two elements of the gospel. I talk about the foundation knowledge of Christ makes known the elements of the gospel. Truth and charity are two elements of the gospel. Okay, there's 12 elements of the gospel. Um, and truth and charity are twins. Okay, the only way to tell them apart is it has to do with that the, uh, truth, okay, is the... Uh, is is Christ in the heart? Okay, it's the it's the form that the knowledge of Christ takes within the heart. Charity is the form that that knowledge takes when it's when it finds expression through faith. 
Okay, so in the heart, charity received in the heart from above. Okay, we receive the love of God. It takes the form of truth in the heart. When that truth is reflected upon and expressed through faith, that's charity. Okay, these are twins. And this is the purpose of God providing truth, is that there, the, the activity of our faith, okay, would give expression to truth in the heart. So this is why uh, the knowledge that we're embracing can be measured okay, by that which we're confirming and conforming to. So the Spirit is necessary for this transaction to take place. Right? The Spirit will only work with the sanctified activity of faith, okay? not with the desire, not with mental consent. Okay? People that are trying to work with the principle and the aspiration and the imagination are not working with the Spirit of God. They're working with the unclean spirits of this world. Okay? They may be spiritual, Okay, but they're not sanctified. Okay, there's a difference between what God has authorized and what God has sanctified. God has authorized okay, uh, the existence of the contradiction within this dimension so that the hearts could be tested, so that faith could be rewarded. Okay? Uh, without, the, without the testing of the heart, there could, be no, there could be no rewarding for the testing of our hearts. Okay, there had to be a contradiction okay, in order for the test, okay, in, or, in order for there to be a reward. Okay, there had to be a choice. So it's those that are walking by faith, okay, choosing to mold their, their confidence and their affections with the things which are from above, okay, not the things which are from beneath, but the things which are from above, okay, <clears throat> who keep their faith joined to Christ through covenant contact with the sanctified tools of the priesthood, okay, they are walking in the light. They are experiencing the reality of the kingdom of God, the reality of Christ working within the soul. They experience regeneration of the soul. And as they experience regeneration, which is another element of the gospel, uh, they will also then experience the renewing of the mind, which is subsequent. Okay? Regeneration in the heart first, renewing of the mind follows after because, this, uh, because the mind is a reflection of the soul. Okay, so there has to be a cleansing. The uh, changing your mind can't change the soul because it's simply a reflection. Okay, it's a reflection. So you can change your thinking pattern, but that doesn't change the pattern of the soul. Okay, however, when Christ works within the soul, bringing about a change within the heart, okay, then that work within the soul is reflected, okay, uh, in the thinking that it is then renewed. Okay. So it doesn't work the other way around, which is what you see people in the false religious system are trying to work the other way around. They want to clean the outside of the cup and fake it till they make it. Okay, but that doesn't that doesn't bring about a change in nature. Okay, only the spirit can do that. Okay, and so this is why the assembly, okay, the assembling of the saints must be centered on truth and end with charity. Okay, we see the same flow and the same uh, exchange taking place. Uh, truth and charity remove the contradictions from the assembly of the saints, and it is not uh, it does not center on the flesh or the frailty of man, but okay, but on truth and charity. Okay, that our fellowship is in Christ. Okay, same thing. That's what he's talking about here. There can be no mingling. There's there's no point in trying to mingle these things because if you mingle, if light and darkness are mixed, then you're in darkness because they can't be mixed. Okay, you see that. Right? You want to talk about shades of gray? Well, shades of gray are in darkness. They're not in the light. Okay, so if you're if you're trying to play with shades, you're already in the darkness. Even though you think you're not, okay, you are. Because there's only one covenant. Okay, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, uh, there's only one covenant. There's only one knowledge. There's only one pattern. There's only one spirit. Right? <clears throat> and there's only one church. This is the body of Christ. So in verse 7, uh, it goes on here, it's concerning uh, bringing out the contrast here. Okay, he says, right, because he was talking about walking in darkness. So he brings out the contrast in verse 7 here. He says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, so walking has to do with active agreement. Okay, again, there's an activity, isn't there? Walking has to do with being an active agreement. Okay, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? All right, this is active agreement. And walking in the light has to do with being agreeable to Christ. Or in other words, abiding in the framework of truth uh, and using the spiritual tools through which the kingdom of light uh, provides inspiration for the fruit of faith. Okay, that's what walking in the light has to do with. All right, or in other words, it's the yielding of the will to the persuasion of this knowledge and inspiration of God's grace, 
uh, that we are being cleansed from the influences of that system of sin. Okay, we're being cleansed from the influences of that system. Right, that uh, this is the work of Christ taking place within the soul. Right, having to do with uh, regeneration. Okay, uh, or, or the cleansing of the conscience. Okay, which is what which is what re regeneration taking place within the heart. Okay, is bringing about a cleansing of the conscience. Okay, this only takes place within the framework of truth, within the covenant of Jesus Christ, okay, within the canopy of his light, walking in his light. This is the order, ordered activity of our faith is, uh, is agreeable to Christ, okay, because we're working only with those things which he has provided from above, okay, which he has made known to us through his stewardship, which he makes living through his spirit, okay, <clears throat> which he calls faith. Okay, he calls these things faith. All right, and we talks about fellowship one with another. That has to do with true conversion. Okay, this is true conversion, able to strengthen others. It's the same thing uh, we see here. Jesus uh, saying here uh, in Luke chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-two, Luke twenty-two thirty-two, which reads, "But I, Jesus, have prayed for you, okay, that your faith fail not, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren." Okay, that's true fellowship. Okay, true conversion, all right, <clears throat> which has to do with the fellowship with this knowledge, okay, this holy ordered knowledge from above. Okay, this is the exchange of substance that we have one with another, that we benefit one another. The whole body being knit together by the Spirit with this one exchange of substance, okay, working with one knowledge, one doctrine, one faith, okay, one Spirit. Uh, and this clean and cleansing takes place through this exchange of charity. Uh, from the foundation of truth, because truth is as a filter, okay, which brings about a, a, a cleansing process, right? Okay, so truth is necessary for that cleansing. Okay, and uh, also truth uh, uh, being as a, a preservative, okay, which uh, preserves the heart. Truth in the heart brings about a preservation because we're able to make make use of that knowledge, okay, in order to keep ourselves within the boundaries of the covenant, okay, that that we would not. Uh, reach beyond those boundaries, okay, to de to defile faith, okay, that we would abide in the light, okay, because we know what the boundaries that God set are, so that we know what is within the plan of God and what is without, okay, we know that pattern, we know the boundaries, we know the, we know the framework, okay, so, it, you know, you would not say that you're not sure whether you're standing inside your house or not, right, because you, you know what it means to be in your house and you know what it means to be outside your house, because there's walls, okay, uh, so you're, you're never confused about, hey, am I in my house right now? You know, you're not confused about that. Very clear distinctions. Well, truth makes very clear distinctions about what it means to be in the light of Christ. Okay, truth makes very clear distinctions about, uh, uh, you know, uh, covenant faith in Christ. So that there's no question about whether you're abiding in Christ or not. Okay, but those that stand in darkness, they are not sure. Okay, they have questions because they're, they're, they, they have trouble making uh, you know, discerning, well, I don't know if that's of God or not. I don't know if that's of God or not. I don't know if that's his spirit. And they're, they're constantly trying to uh, to weigh these things, <clears throat> you know, within themselves. There's no discernment within themselves. Again, that's an offense to God because they're using the principle for truth. They're using their own principle for discernment. Okay, to choose those things which they use to excuse themselves and condemn others. Okay, that's using principle for uh, as a fulcrum for discernment. If you're using your own principle as a fulcrum for discernment, then you're offending God. Okay, and you're offending others, too. <clears throat> uh, but the greater offense is to offend God, of course. Uh, now, he talks about the blood. Uh, that the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Okay, uh, He's not talking about the droplets. He's talking about what the, what the blood provided, okay, which is the covenant. Okay, What the blood is sprinkled upon, the tools. Okay, That's what he's talking about. Okay, The blood provided the covenant, the new covenant. Okay. Uh, which the old covenant was was not of power to bring cleansing to the conscience because Christ was not yet whole. He was in part. Okay, uh, But he uh, marked the point of transition between the covenants, bringing to an end all things that pointed to him. Okay, All those things were fulfilled within himself. Okay, They all uh, pointed to the time of his coming. At the time of his coming, he brought those things to completion. Therefore, they're complete. They're done to put away with. And he initiated within himself a new covenant, okay, 
uh, to set the record uh, for our faith within himself, okay, with the tools and the knowledge within himself, that we may now experience that new power. It's a better covenant with better promise, okay, the cleansing of the conscience, the regeneration of the soul, okay, uh, renewing of the mind. This is the covenant of Jesus Christ. Okay, so people that are trying to mix the, the law of Moses in with faith in Christ, okay, they're not able to, uh, to rightly divide. They're confused. Okay, they don't understand the distinction God set between the covenants. They don't understand what it means that these things had been fulfilled in Christ and brought to completion by him. Okay. <clears throat> they're trying to uh, work with the moral code uh, for, uh, and use their principle okay, in order for, uh, for righteousness, but the Spirit won't, won't bridge the principle to righteousness. The Spirit won't bridge the moral code to righteousness. Okay, that's a self-righteousness. There's no benefit to that in the, in the sight of God. The benefit in the sight of God is faith in Christ. Okay, this is what pleases the Father. He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I well pleased. Or in other words, join yourself to Him. Okay, join yourself to Him. Your faith must be sanctified, okay, uh, by contact with Him. Okay, so when he talks about this blood, he's talking about what the blood provided, the covenant. So that, that our uh, contact with Him would be would be governed by uh, His grace and truth and His Spirit. All right, so re uh, reciprocation must be in pure form. Okay, no doubt, no emulation, no strife. Okay, we simply join ourselves to that which God has already provided for our faith in himself. He's already provided everything necessary for your faith in Christ within himself. Okay, all we're doing is joining ourselves to him by those things. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. This is, this is not a mountain you're climbing here. Okay, God has provided everything within himself. Okay, uh, and we, we simply need to submit ourselves to him to receive these things of him okay, and walk by faith. Very simple. Uh, and in verse 8, he goes on, i got about seven minutes left here. Um, so in verses 8 through 10, uh, he's addressing little children. Okay, in verses 8 through 10, he's addressing little children um, who struggle with, with double-mindedness, all right? And uh, we can see this in, in chapter 2, verse 1. All right. But if so, he says here, if we say that we uh, that we have no sin, okay, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Okay. So, again, he's addressing little children, which you see in, in, in chapter 2, verse 1 here, who are struggling with double mindedness. And this is why he's bringing these things out. Uh, and a lot of people struggle with uh, with these verses here okay, because they're trying to, to discern these things carnally. All right. But if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All right? Saying we have no sin, this speaks of two things. Okay, uh, First of all, it speaks of saying uh, that conflict doesn't exist. All right? that, but we all have to go through our cycles of growth for purging and pruning. Okay, uh, But saying that the conflict doesn't exist okay, is, is one thing there. Also, uh, and therefore the cycles of our growth are not necessary. All right? So saying we have no sin. Number two, it also uh, has to do with um, it's, uh, speaking of our origin, okay, uh, before our selection by faith. Okay, speaking of our origin before our selection of faith, okay, that we were not in need of Christ. Okay, that there was no need for our cleansing. There's no need for redemption. Okay, let's take a look at this in uh, Ezekiel. I've got a couple of references here. Ezekiel 16, verse 3 which reads, And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Your birth and your nativity is of the land of Canaan. Okay? Your father was an Amorite, and your mother was a Hittite. All right? All right so it's the selection is by faith. The selection is by faith. Okay? So uh, speaking of our origin before our selection by faith, okay, same thing, saying we have no sin. Uh, Deuteronomy 26, verse 5 also. Uh, uh, which reads, And you shall uh, speak and say before the Lord your God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few, and became there a nation uh, great, mighty, and, and, pop and populous. So, again, he's saying, A Syrian ready to per perish was, was my father. Okay, so if we say we have no sin, if we're, okay, we're not in need okay, of the cleansing of the conscience. Okay, <clears throat> that, uh, that, we're not in need of the work of Christ within the soul. 
Okay, and deceiving ourselves has to do with uh, using religion. And he says that we deceive ourselves it has to do with using religion uh, for our forte, or in other words, confirming self-interest uh, or confirming self and self-interest instead of Christ and in the interest of the Father. Okay, the interest of the Father is the work of Christ within the soul. So if you're confirming self and self-interest, okay, you're doing so instead of Christ and in the interest of God. Okay, and the distinction is only by faith. Okay, that uh, as as concerning that which is of uh, that which is of God and that which is for self. Okay, we the separation comes by the by the selection of faith. Okay, we must use those things that God has separated and and sanctified for our faith in Christ. Okay, and he says that truth is not in us. That has to do with uh, well, there's three manifestations of truth. Okay, the person, what he says, and what he does. Okay, which has to do with the product. Okay, so there's three manifestations of truth, the person, what he says, and and what he does, being the product. Okay, so in other words, you're hearing but not doing, and therefore there's no product of his work in you. Okay, you're hearing but not doing, and therefore there's no product of your work, uh, of his work in you. Very simple. Okay, so there's uh, that having to do with it, his truth is not in us. Uh, in verse 9 he goes on, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, confessing our sins has to do with expressing repentance in God's terms. Okay, not group therapy sessions. That's not what he's talking about here. Uh, we confess our sins by joining ourselves to the one who cleanses us from them. Okay, we join ourselves to the one who cleanses us from them. God did not set the power of remission in getting uh, sins out in the open. Okay, that's not the record that he provided for the remission of sins. Okay, he said it within Christ and the sanctified tools that he authorizes. Okay, it is only through these things that we experience the remission of sins. Okay, not in uh, not in, in group therapy sessions, not in getting them out in the open, not in airing dirty laundry and these sorts of things. Okay, all the things that you see in the false religious system. That's that's not what God provided for our redemption. Okay, that's not what He provided for the remission of sins. He provided the covenant of Jesus Christ. Okay. He provided his truth, his government, his spirit. Okay. And he says that he is faithful and he is just, right? He remains consistent to the terms of his covenant, which he set in Christ. He will not deviate from the terms that he set. Okay. You cannot change God's mind. You cannot, you cannot force God to bow to your principle okay, and set policy for his spirit. Okay. You cannot dictate to him how he will re perform re uh, redemption within your soul. And you have to work with what he has provided. It'd be like calling up your doctor and saying, yeah, I know I need heart surgery, uh, but I really don't like the hospital that you want me to go to, uh, you know, where you have your operating room. I want you to come and do it uh, in my neighbor's garage instead. Okay? And the doctor's going to say, well, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't help you. You know, you don't tell me where, to, where I perform my surgery. Uh, and so, the same thing with uh, their missions of sin. We don't get to, we don't get to set the terms uh, to God. God set the terms. Okay, we have to conform to that which God has already set, and therefore we must work with the knowledge and the power and the tools uh, that He has provided for our faith. And He says that He'll forgive us our sins and cleanse us. All right. In other words, having making us free from the penalty and free from the power. Okay, free from the penalty and free from the power. This speaks of both the uh, doctrinal cleansing and spiritual cleansing okay both we must first know him uh, we must first know what the terms are that god set uh, what god set for us to seal our repentance with faith okay we must first know what those terms are that we can come in an agreement with him okay so there's, there's a doctrinal cleansing and a spiritual cleansing that must take place okay we must be justified by his knowledge okay, as we see in uh, the prophet isaiah okay now cleansing uh, only comes in the light. Okay, confession without cleansing is unprofitable. There's no benefit to that. Okay, cleansing, <laughs> uh, confession without cleansing is unprofitable, and confession only takes place within the light. Therefore, you must be converted. Okay, you must come into covenant with God. We only experience cleansing through regeneration, and remission is in the tools. Okay, the spiritual tools of the covenant, which are sanctified for our use with the spiritual priesthood. Okay, you must learn of these things to make use of these things. And I'm going just a hair over here, but there's only one more verse, so uh, sorry about that. So if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, okay, and his word is not in us. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 
Right? In other words, if we say that we have not sinned, right, this does not mean that we continue to sin. That's not what he's saying. Okay? We are not sanctified sinners. It's not at all what he's saying. Uh, God does not justify sin. Okay? Satan justifies sin. Right? So if you, are, uh, if you are seeing yourself as a sanctified sinner, you're not working with the knowledge of Christ. You're working with defiled knowledge. Okay? Defiled knowledge. You're working with the kingdom of darkness. Okay? God does not justify sin. Right? That's not what he's saying. He says that we make him a liar. We are uh, we are saying that God confirms our principle. Okay, we, we would be saying that God confirms our principle if we're saying that. Okay, and His word is not in us, or in other words, there's no substance of light being formed in us. Okay, we're not taking on the fruit of faith. Okay, uh, we're not uh, molding our confidence okay, with the knowledge of Christ. There's no substance being sown within us by the Spirit. All right? And Christ is not working in us. And he says that his word is not in us. Or in other words, not taking seed. Okay, uh, It's not. Uh, it's like uh, the seed that's cast upon right the uh, the stones. Okay? And then it springs up and then fades away in the grass. Or it's cast amongst the thorns. Okay? It's not taking root. It's not taking seed. Right? So we can't use the things of the world for growth. Okay? They only defile. Okay? The things of the world cannot be used for spiritual growth. They only defile. Okay, tear down and destroy. All right, what does he say? We see also here in 1 John 3, 6. Okay, and then I'll, I'll close with this. All right, so whosoever abides in him sins not. And whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Okay, so he's not saying uh, that uh, that we continue in sin. It's not at all what he's saying here. Uh, so with that, we'll close and uh, we'll pick up here in 1 John chapter 2 uh, next week. So I will go ahead and turn the microphone over for the reading of spiritual sacrifices. Thank you.